There we go. You're good right. to go. I will let you uh, take over now. Right. Thank you. Okay. So, what we're going to cover in this half hour is a short taster session for the common workflow language. Uh, there's myself and Michael and Gerard here today to provide help and assistance during this. Uh, so, uh, if I can. So, the schedule we'll look at, we'll have a quick introduction uh, where I'll talk about computational workflows in CWL. I'm going to try a group coding session. Hopefully, this will go okay. Um, there are some setup steps in the uh, Google Doc for this session. Uh, so there's some guidance on installing Docker in CWL, and there's a link for the Git repository that we'll be using with some of the examples. Could you follow the setup steps while I give this introductory talk so that we can try and move smoothly onto the group coding session? And there is a list. We're asking for volunteers. If you have Docker and CWL tool installed on your computer already, and if you're willing to share your screen, could you add your name to the list so that we can have some volunteers for the group coding? It's okay if you don't have that. That's fine. We'll uh, be okay. If we need to, myself and Gerard and Michael will uh, lead the, those group coding sessions. But we'll try and have a number of breakout rooms and try for four or five people per breakout room. That. And then hopefully we'll have a bit of time for a Q&A afterwards. So computational workflows. These are uh, intended to try and give a more structured approach to uh, organizing our computational work. So the I have here a slide showing some of the useful properties of computational workflows. There's not quite 10 here, but uh, we have some uh, suggestions about what an ideal computational workflow would allow us to do. So we would hopefully have uh, some abstraction of our system. So we don't want users to be focusing on the system that they're working on. We want to give them that kind of separation so that they can work, focus purely on the workflow. And we want something which will handle heterogeneity and complexity. And if we can do that stepping away from the machine that we're working on, that should hopefully provide increased shareability and adaptability of these workflows so that we can share these methods uh, for papers and then they can be reproduced by other users. So for in order to help with that, we want to make sure that we've got very portable workflows. So using containerization or using packaging for the tools that we use is very helpful. So we'd like some uh, computational workflow to be able to help enable us to work with those systems. And that will then help us with scalability and infrastructure access as well as automation and hopefully reporting as well. So an ideal workflow manager or uh, system would provide these properties, would help users with these uh, property, uh, systems. So common workflow language. This is a open standard, so it's not technically a workflow manager in itself. It's a standard for describing analysis of workflows and tools. It's been in development since 2014, and it's community-based standards effort. Now it defined with using a schema and specification what that implementation should be. And we have a reference implementation, CWL tool, but there are a number of other runners, workflow managers, which also support this, such as Toil and Alvados and such like. So because there are multiple implementations of this now, this uh, workflows written in CWL are quite portable and scalable across a variety of software and environments. So it's, the standard supports the use of Docker and Singularity. So I've got workflows I've run on my local computer and also run on HPC. And we're designing, it's been designed to try and meet the needs of data intensive science. 
So we're looking to try and improve the fairness of these workflows. So CWL itself is written using the YAML format. So this is an example of a basic setup for a CWL workflow. So in the top right, we have the input file, which is uh, has a little text string defining hello world. On the left, we have workflow script itself, which reads in that text file and has a step, which is calling an echo script, which is defined. So this calls the echo command, which is defined on the right, lower right. So there's a definition for command line tool, which gives the base command and how you then will interact that with that for your inputs. Now, this is a very verbose language. And if you ever run a hello world example, you'll be looking at this thinking, this is a lot of code for not very much deliverable. But when we move on to more complex examples, we will hopefully see the advantage of some of this publicity and how the language actually helps us in running uh, uh, tasks. So what I'm going to do here now is show you uh, the fast QC tool. So this is a quality analysis tool used for genomics. Uh, this we can run via Docker. Uh, there are various packages for the uh, bioinformatics uh, in the bioinformatics uh, workspace, which are provided via Docker. And so we're going to try running now this command and I'll show you what outputs we get from this. So hopefully that should work. Right. Can everybody see my terminal in the middle of the screen? And is the text big enough? Please give me, do I need to make the text, make text bigger? bigger? Okay, so does that help? Am I sharing the correct? We see or can you still see the slides? Yeah, we see your old desktop, so why don't you uh, maximize and increase the font size? Okay, I will try and hopefully is that better? Uh, so I'm going maybe to a little bigger. It is better, but maybe a little. Okay, bigger. thanks. Right. Uh, so. This is the command that we're about to run. So this is running Docker. And before I do that, I need to make an output directory. So this is Docker doesn't automatically deal with uh, file management for us. So we need to create a di directory. But we are going to uh, mount. So this command here is mounting that output directory. And then I've got a command here, which is mounting an input directory, which is going to contain the genomic data that we're working on. And then we define here the, uh, the Docker container that we're going to work with. And we have here then the command and uh, we're running an extract command or, or function using the analysis tool. And we're going to, produce some uh, analysis of this uh, genomic data. So when I run this, uh, now I've already downloaded the Docker container, so we don't have to go through building this. Ah. And I will just boot up Docker now. There's always one step that I forget. I do apologize. So while I wait for Docker to load up, so there's a lot of steps, a lot of information that we need to include for connecting to the Docker process. And uh, it's very easy to miss the steps that we're trying to follow or to miss one of these inputs. So using something like CWL is going to formalize that uh, information passing so that we have a structured way to uh, process uh, to this command. 
now, hopefully. Docker should be, uh, it is still booting up. So, uh, I'll wait for that. How many do we have? Um, okay, so what we'll do for the group coding, I think, is myself and Gerard and Michael will post in the breakout rooms when we do the group coding, and we can discuss more with you uh, how we run uh, CWL scripts and show you some of the scripts that we'll work through. Uh, actually, that's going to take a little while. Okay. Um, I think so. Uh, there's a couple of questions. Uh, Podman, I've not used. Uh, maybe I'll ask you in the breakout room, Adam, about Podman. And Docker Compose is is useful. I don't know, uh, Michael might be able to advise if we can use Docker Compose directly from CWL or if we have to have the Docker images pre-built. I think they need to be pre-built. Yeah, Docker Compose is great for orchestrating services. Um, okay. but here we're talking about workflows made of command line tools. So we're not, it's not about exposing ports and connecting things through different ports. Um, and about the question about Podman, um, so the CWL standards uh, use Docker's format software containers, but you're welcome to use any doc, any software container engine. So Podman, Singularity, New Docker, if it can handle a, a Docker format software container, um, there's probably support for it in some CWL runner or another. So the reference runner does have Podman and Singularity support built in, and that. Um, you see that support in several other uh, implementations of CWL as well. But great questions. We even test in CI using uh, Podman and CWL. Still. Yeah. You okay. made breakout rooms. Would you like me to create some for you? How many do you want? Um, how many participants have? I guess three breakout rooms. Yeah. I can create uh, three. Might be easiest. If we've got, and then myself and Michael and Gerald can okay. uh, lead for group coding in each. I have so what we'll, three breakout rooms for you. Um, they are for self assignment. So if everyone, when we're ready to go to breakout rooms, goes to the breakout rooms button at the bottom of the Zoom interface, you can assign yourself to a room. Right. Sorry, okay. I'll let you think. Great. Now that's great. Thank you. So I'll just demonstrate now running this command you're using Docker so we know what we're looking for. Uh, um, oh. Hopefully. Okay. So that should, once it loads up, I think I haven't tried running this while hosting and streaming from Zoom as well. So it might run a little bit slow on my laptop. Huzzah. Let me say a little bit, it might run very slow on my laptop. Oh. Yeah, I think this is this is showing that it's going to work, and yes, we will also show running this using a structured workflow system, like one that implements the CBL standards. Uh, means that you get to focus on the analysis and configuring the analysis and not mucking around with Docker stuff. Um, so yeah, for maybe for one tool, it seems like a lot of work, but a lot of times for analysis pipelines, we might have twenty or thirty tools. 
and you might want to run these in parallel and on remote systems. So having that structured workflow system handle all that, uh, coordinate all those executions, maybe even help you manage the data has a lot of advantages. Yes. The fiscal. So we're almost fair for this workflow. Um, Another reason to use a structured workflow approach is also um, many tools, their documentation is not really quite clear about what sort of outputs you will get. And since for CWL and other workflow languages, you actually have to say where to find the outputs, you can kind of give them helpful names. Uh, it's, it often can make those tools uh, increase their usability. Yes. And that's something that we'll demonstrate uh, in the group coding. So once this has copied the data across, I'll show you what we do get. But we'll in that group coding, we'll show you how you can select the output that you're wanting uh, to pull from that data set. I think that is. That is almost done. Mm. This is going back to discussion of remote and uh, in-person working. This is one of the things we forget. I forget about for remote working is the cost of running Zoom and trying to do such demonstrations. Okay, that's almost done. Um, right, I think if we go to breakout rooms, I will perhaps that will, and we can start to be mindful that this has taken a bit longer than I was hoping. We'll try and have a look at the group coding. So we'll go to the breakout rooms and spend 10 minutes having a look at that, if that's OK. Uh, so we'll. So Doug, you can take room one, Gerard can take room two, and I'll take room three. OK, yeah. See you all the thinking. So workflow thinking is um, an interesting skill. If you've got lots of you know, command line tools, how do we split this up? How do we organize it? How do we keep track of all of that? And we actually didn't find a lot of curriculum about teaching that part about workflows. We find lots of curriculum for using particular workflow systems. And, um, and that's great. You want to learn the ins and outs of those, but not so much stepping back and trying to help people new to using workflows to see when to use them and how to structure it, how to visualize. You don't have to start by writing CWL. You can start with a piece of paper, a whiteboard, a bash script, a make file. All these are great forms of organizing your, your thoughts and your progress. But at some point, often these analysis get really big, and you just need something more structured to organize them. Any other questions about different ways to run CWL, kind of what it's good for, what it's not? Where to learn more? It looks like there's no questions here. I may just send another message into the breakout rooms asking them to uh, wrap up very soon because we, uh, we need to head back to the main session in five minutes. Yeah, I'm going to dive up some water, but I think it's, it's pretty clear, okay, that you've got the tutorials on the site, so that's presumably the next step if we want it, right? Yep. We also have a nice chat room, um, uh, a matrix that links in the website. Um, 
and um, maybe people can also ping me on Slack if they have additional questions. Cool. Enjoy your hydration. <laughs>